Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. Today we're here once again behind the computer here for another editing video. Today we're here covering three different editing techniques that will give your photos this really beautiful glow and also blur to them. And I know blurry photos is a big trend within photography right now. And I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I really do love how a blurry photo comes out, but I do think it needs to be done correctly. And that's what we're gonna kind of be covering today. Seriously, all three of these tips are gonna take your photos from a normal like good shot to something that's like really, really great. Also, my goal with these is to kind of have you guys step out of your editing comfort zone a bit because I can totally get in the same sort of habits with my editing techniques and just kind of fly by doing the same thing. And I feel like it's super important to like add a little spice here and there and like change up your edits. These tips and tricks are pretty easy, but I'll be walking you through every step of the way of how we can take a photo like this to something really cool like this. I'll be editing all these photos within Adobe Photoshop and I'll also be using these two things right here. This right here is the MX Creative Console from Logitech. And a huge thank you to Logitech for working with me on this video. This tool is really designed for us creatives to streamline our editing process. Whether you're working on photos, videos, audio, or graphic design, this console works seamlessly with Adobe Creative Suite. So you can use all those programs that you already know and already love. And my favorite part about this is you can personally customize this to match your own editing style and super easily integrate it into what you already do. Their marketplace is also ever growing with different plugins, profiles, icon packs, and more. So you can work faster, be in more control, and also have creative freedom while you do it. Also, if you're someone like me who is very, again, like stuck in their ways of editing and stuck in their ways of doing things, like I find myself hating using new gear and having to figure out a new software. So if you're like me, this really is for you because it is super easy to set up right out of the box. It comes in these two pieces. This one right here is the dial pad and I've customized it to exactly how I want it. So this one is an undo and redo button. This dial right here zooms in and out of my canvas on Photoshop. This is a grid on and off button and then a fit to screen button. And then this actually I've customized to control the opacity of a layer. So I could literally just scroll if I want to increase the intensity or dial it down a bit. And then this right here is the keypad. We're working in Photoshop, like I said, so I have customized this to have my most used tools on that first page. And then we could just go down the line and see all the different tools I have in there as well. And what's really cool is you could super easily change up the order. So we're gonna be using some specific tools throughout our edits today over and over again. So I just have those on that first first page so we can really easily get to them and use them super fast. So while I edit today, you'll see me using this off to the side and you'll see just how quickly we can get through an edit. We're gonna throw on our glasses and jump into the first edit. The first one we're gonna cover is the quickest way possible that I've found to add a nice little glow to your images. Recently, I've been adding a lens filter to a lot of the shoots that I go on and that gives my photos a really nice cinematic glow right out of the camera, but sometimes I want the option to have my image be sharp and add the glow later on. So this first technique is the perfect solution for that. So here we have this photo of my friend Charlotte and I'm gonna throw this in Adobe Camera Raw like I always do. Also a quick little note about the Creative Console and Camera Raw because as you can see, I'm not using the keypad or the dial pad here. Logitech is constantly growing their platform so definitely be on the lookout on their marketplace in the near future for that Camera Raw support because they're always working on something. Okay, back to the video. And I just sort of changed the colors to how I prefer them. I've shown you guys how I use Camera Raw a bunch which is basically basically me just going down the line and making all of these color adjustments to my liking. So we're just gonna speed on through this so we can get right on into the actual technique. Okay, so upon entering Adobe Photoshop, we are just going to duplicate our base layer. And then with that duplicated layer on our console here, we're going to select Gaussian Blur and play around with the strength of that. This of course is up to you, but for that glow effect, we're gonna want it to be pretty strong because we can always lower the opacity later on. Now we're gonna change the blending mode to screen and then we're gonna click curves and bring down those shadows to add a bit more contrast to our image and that's because with that screen blending mode it just tends to brighten and sort of also decontrast our whole image so we're just sort of leveling that out and I'm not kidding that is quite literally it for this effect so with just a few quicks on here we're getting such a really nice subtle glow but you can still tell what's going on in the image which is our goal so we're still getting those crucial details that we really need after that we can just get more meticulous with the colors and the levels going on. So we're just going back into Camera Raw and playing with some of those presets. I feel like I always talk about this, but I love the presets within Camera Raw. So I always opt for the cinematic one or two pack as well as the vintage pack. And all 
these are built in within Adobe Camera Raw. Back in Photoshop, we're gonna click on Gradient Map, and that Gradient Map tool is actually gonna come up a lot today during our edit, so I just went ahead and put this on the first page of my keypad here, just so I have easy access. From here, we're gonna play with the levels, then we're just combining our layers and exporting it for sharing. And there you go, super easy first round of this sort of glow effect. Here is the before, and here is the after. Now we're going to create this sort of really cool motion blur glow situation. And this one is definitely a little bit more of a stylized look. This one we're opening right into Photoshop because I actually shot this one with the new Nikon camera, the Z52. And Adobe Camera Raw is not yet able to read this file because it's a really new camera. We're going to edit the JPEG because I'm really not mad about how the colors look. I think they actually look really, really good just straight out of camera. We're gonna be doing some adjusting. So once again, we're duplicating our layer and doing a bit of retouching with the patch tool. There's so many ways to retouch skin, but for me, I just want the quickest way possible, honestly, so I found that the patch tool works really good for me. To make our model here pop a bit more, we're gonna use the dodge tool and brighten up those existing midtones and highlights. From there on our duplicated layer that we've been working on, we're going to go to filter and then motion blur. From there, you can play around with the direction and the strength of your blur. It's completely up to you. After that, we're gonna put the motion blurred layer below the original one and then erase just those edges there. So you can see that it starts to really show through on that one side. And the key to this, I feel like, is to keep at least half of the face or the object you're doing this to in focus. So I'm just using a smaller brush and making sure at least one of her eyes is in focus. Because anytime I'm taking pictures of a person, I just feel like the main focal point. And the thing that people really look to right away when seeing an image of a human is their eyes. After that, we're gonna liquefy that motion blurred layer a bit, just sort of extending out some of the blur and adding some shape to it. And to really focus in on the face even more, we're gonna crop in and then play with levels. Now, the really fun part here, playing around with the colors and getting really, really funky with it. So we're gonna do that by using a gradient map. I do really like the built-in gradient map presets, but what I did is I went ahead and downloaded some of my favorites from a few different designers that I love that we're offering packs online. So I have these that I'm just going through and just seeing what effect we're getting here. I really like the red, but I also really like this green. So I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go with both and export each one separately. And there we have it. We have this really uniquely colored motion blur. We went from this image to this and this. So let me know if you guys prefer the red or do you prefer the green? All right, moving on. This next technique will be based around a path blur. This is a bit similar to that last one with the motion blur. But in my opinion, this one is even more unique because you can be in even better control of what that blur is doing. We're also going to approach it a little bit differently as well. So just wait to see how cool this one is. So we're going to select our subject here. Photoshop select subject tool is actually super accurate for the most part, so I'm just gonna go with that. We're going on a new layer now and pasting that subject there and then duplicating that. And because we're going to be morphing and transforming the subject layer, I always just like to have a backup underneath, so that's why I'm just doing that. Then under those subject layers, we're going to fill a layer with a color of your choice. I would recommend going with a color that is already existing somewhere in your image, so I'm going to go with this sort of gray blue. And with that, I'm starting to notice Notice that some of the backdrop is showing through and you can see that ceiling is separate from the backdrop the subject's supposed to be on it. So it just feels a little bit off. So what I did is I added a generative fill button to my keyboard. So with just one click, it is now fixed super fast. Okay, now the fun part, we're going to go to filter, blur gallery, and then path blur. And then with this, be sure to enable edit blur shapes so that you can go really crazy with it. Just playing around with the shapes and you can create new pathways. And this just sort of took me a second to get it how I like it. Sometimes I feel like when I'm doing this, I do it really fast and other times I'm just playing around to see what we can get. But I feel like this is looking good. So we're going to now add a gradient map color of our choice once again. I told you that gradient map is just gonna be a recurring thing within these edits. And then click the eraser tool and make the brush size really large and then zoom out. We're gonna basically erase half of that filled in 
color we added earlier. So some of the original backdrop shines through. And so by doing this, we're walking away with a really cool gradient sort of backdrop. Then we're just gonna go in and play with the levels and camera raw, of course, my favorite things. You guys see while I'm doing this, like there's just recurring tools that I use over and over again. So we may be stepping out of our comfort zone with the sort of blurry edits, but I always go back to some of those adjustment layers that I know and I love. Just choosing a preset that I think best matches the vibe. And then lastly, we'll crop in. And there we have it, our finished result. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. All right, so now glasses are coming off. We finished the edits and we walked away with these three super unique edits that were pretty easy. If I went too fast for any of you, you can always replay it, slow it down and do it at your own pace. And I feel like I almost went so fast because I was able to with the Creative Console here from Logitech. So a huge thank you once again to them for sending this through and allowing me to complete my edits with it and really speed through things that would normally take me a way longer time. All right, editing Brandon here, jumping in really quick to let you guys all know that the Creative Console comes with an exclusive offer of a free three month Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. And this is valid for both new and existing Adobe accounts. If you're interested in getting one of these for yourself, I'm gonna be including a link in the description where you can pick one up. If you find yourself using any of these tips or techniques within your own edits and you share a photo, be sure to tag me because I would love to see how yours turned out. But yeah, let me know what kinds of edits you'd like to see me do next. And with all that, I'll see you guys soon. Bye.